Hi, beautiful people. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Ayola and I am a YouTuber from Nigeria based in Texas. Welcome back to another video. If you are new here, thank you for joining. And if you are a returning subscriber, you already know your answer to prayers. Thank you for always coming back. Today's video is one of my international student series. And uh, let's just dive right into it. First off, I'm not in such a hype mode because I don't know what's happening. My views on YouTube have been so poor and it's beginning to affect like my creativity. Like I've been, I've been thinking, what am I doing wrong? What am I supposed to do right? And I honestly don't know. I've, the views have been so bad that before I upload my next video, I'm already thinking, how bad will this one be? see i'm not trying to be negative or anything i don't know what's happening to youtube algorithm but it's not so um heartwarming that you put in a lot of work make videos edit and basically nothing is happening no engagement no comments no likes and i'm not here just going to pretend like it's not happening it's happening like i'm seeing 80 views the 50 views and i'm seeing 20 something views and i'm like what the heaven is happening here it's very sad and i don't know if you're watching this video i don't know what you would do to make it better but yeah please do share my content please like them please subscribe to this channel um don't just subscribe because i can see that the subscribers um count is doing really well but this is not a ranting video but i'm just honestly very sad about that but it won't stop me from doing what i think is best to do so for the international set, congratulations. I'm going to try my best to keep my energy as up as I can. So congratulations, got your admission, done all the processing. I'm so proud of you. And it's we are like in August right now. This video, I'm shooting this video July 30th, and I know that it won't be up maybe till August 1st or 2nd or whatever it is. But happy new month is coming in August. And I know that most international students they come in July, August because school resumes in August, yeah. So I want to just quickly do this video on things to pack. So one of my international students that I've been talking to reached out to me and she was like, oh, I was trying to figure out what to pack and I don't know, I watched your videos, but I didn't like, I, I didn't put anything solid here on what to pack. And I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. I probably made the video because I know you're not the only one that must have been searching for this kind of content. So this is me telling you what to pack when you are moving as an international student from any African country down to the US. Things you should pack and things you should not bother packing. So let's dive into it this moment. First things first, of course, no brainer. You must bring your document. You see that file you took to the embassy, just the way you took it to the embassy. Yes, that's exact way. Bring it as you are coming. Your documents, your DS1CC, your I-20, your passport. And you can't even travel without your passport in the first place. So just that entire folder, you need to bring it. Then make sure you, as I said in my last or previous video, I said it, don't put it in your check-in bag. Make sure you put it in your hand luggage or the one your handbag something don't just put it in your checking bag because you might not see your checking bag until you get to your destination second thing you should definitely bring will be your gadget so gadget in terms of your laptop your um phone your charger because there are some things that don't work with some phones in the us especially i think all these china brands of phone i know every phone is like China in one way or the other, but I mean like in Phoenix Techno, I'm not so sure that your SIM, not that the phone will work, but the SIM you will get here might not be compatible. The phones I'm sure about the Samsung and iPhone, but I know that some people don't have them or some people don't necessarily like those brands. So I don't know how you want to do it because your SIM might not work in those phones. I'm not saying you should buy a new phone because you're traveling. I'm just saying if you can afford it, then get it. Samsung or, a, or an iPhone or try to check if your phone is compatible with SIMs that are US SIMs or something like that. I don't know how you do that. Probably have to go to computer village to do that, but try to find out that so you don't get stranded, especially when you're coming on your phone, you're going straight to school, you don't know anybody, 
this is something you should definitely put into consideration. Then I, oh, I was supposed to show you guys my charger. Hold on a bit. Let me bring my charger for you. I'm back. I just want to bring like samples of the charger that I was speaking about. So this mount of charger is one, this kind. So in Nigeria or in most African countries, we have the other type of charger. I have it because I brought it and this is laptop charger. It comes like this. Okay, that's that's the illustration I wanted to give because I can't describe it with just my mouth. So if you're coming, when you're bringing your gadgets, I know that for iPhone users, you probably have this kind of charger, but for like regular, maybe Android users, you probably have the regular type of charger. See, I don't know what the name is called, but you should try your best to get this kind of chargers when you are coming, because this is the kind of sockets that is available here in the US. And it might be a strain on you if your, if your laptop charger is of the other type, you might not be able to plug in your laptop or your phone and that's not like a very good thing. But I know that some people go all out to look for these chargers and unfortunately they don't get and just stresses them out. Honestly, chargers are not that pricey here. They are pretty much affordable. They are not as expensive as people make it seem. Now when you're coming, you don't bring your charger and you suffer to find it. Nah, you always get, but just because you are coming on your phone, you, you need a week or two to familiarize yourself with the area and where to get your stuff from. So in that moment, you need what you can use immediately. So please get this kind of chargers if you can. And if you can't, Definitely don't worry about it. Don't stress. Don't overspend on it. Don't plunge on it because you're saying you must get it, you must get it. And somebody's trying to scam you because you're desperate to get this kind of charger. It's actually not that deep here. It's not that cheap. It's not that pricey. Moving on, and about your laptops. I know if you don't have a laptop and you probably need to get a laptop, you should get it. But if you still consider maybe your taste to change, you probably want a different kind of laptop later, you can actually come here and explore the options of getting a laptop, a laptop or a phone. These things you can get them and do a um, instrumental payment for them here. You don't necessarily have to buy them like at once if you don't have enough money to spare. You can actually buy them and pay instrumentally. So don't stress over these things. They are good, you bring yours, uh, just have peace of mind. I know that for a few weeks, you're not going to have to spend on things like gadgets. But worst case scenario, you don't have them, you can't afford them, you get here, you do some mental payments and you have what you need. Simple as that, but you should definitely pack your gadgets. And your, I also would largely recommend that your gadgets should be in your carry-on bag or yeah, or your purse. I don't know how you do that, but don't keep it in your checking bag too. It doesn't really make sense. Then another thing that might be optional will be a power bank because they honestly have two four seven lights here. <laughs> okay, no shade, but they are, they have two four seven electricity here. But for people that have a longer stop over time, um, a longer lay over time in another airport, and uh, to charge because you there's there's a port in the plane where you can plug your cord to charge your phone, so that's not a problem. But when you land to wait for your next connecting flight. If you know your phone battery is bad, I brought a power bank because my phone battery was pretty bad when I was coming. So during the layover, I was able to charge my phone because I didn't, I'm sure there'll be a charging spot at the airport, but no, not something I want to be looking for. So if you can consider the option of the power bank, while just for the sake of it, honestly, so you can buy a very cheap, a very cheap power bank just for that moment because you might, you might not necessarily in fact, I don't even remember. I can't remember where my power bank is now. What's it about also would be your traveling bag. So you see all those fancy boxes you see on the Instagram as they are jackpying and they are traveling. My dear, honestly speaking, that box, those boxes are just aesthetically pleasing. Aside that, those boxes are more harm than good. It's beautiful. I would advise you that you, if you want to, if you've already bought your box, then fine. But if not, you should actually buy maybe just one box. Just for the flex of it, but I would suggest you buy a traveling bag, the clothes ones, the ones that have wheels. I'll definitely put a picture of it somewhere here. 
and also you can use a Ghana must go. So I paid extra 150,000 Naira for luggage while I was coming and that was the most annoying money I've had to pay in a long time because the truth is you are entitled to 23 kg, two bags that are 23 kg and I didn't have a scale at home so I also advise you to get a scale at home to weigh your bags and make sure that your bags are 23 kg so you don't have to be at the airport and be trying to throw your things out or pay for extra luggage. That extra luggage was not necessary because there were just a few inches that my bag was but if my bag, I had one black um travel bag like the one i was talking about and i had my box if i had known i would have just used the ghana must go honestly because in the end at the airport i had to buy a ghana must go because my i think i had to drop one of my box and buy a ghana must go because the weight of my box was contributing to the load i have to carry so it was so annoying so guys if you can avoid it avoid it don't worry about the fanciness you'll see people at the airport with a lot of ghana must go so you are not the only one doing this thing so your box you can use one carry-on that would be a smaller box then maybe a medium box and uh, that should be it don't necessarily use that for set box and all that those things will stress you out at the airport then let's move on to clothes so I'm a big fan of this clothes thing because that's been like a trend on um on TikTok now. Now people that said I shouldn't bring clothes to Canada or to US got punish you and all that. But yeah, I'm just saying I think you should know the season you are coming in. US is not the fact that you think you see snow in every Christmas movie does not mean it's snowing. Right now it's like 7 p.m. and I am not using any extra light. It is so bright outside and the sun is scorching hot. So know the season you are coming in. If you are coming in summer, honestly speaking, my darling, just pack light clothes. Mm -mm -hmm. I'm telling you this thing. Be open-minded. Pack very light clothes because it's hot outside. But if you are coming in the fall, then it's almost going to be a little bit breezy, not cold. It's just going to be like, um, yeah, the weather will just be okay, very good, very nice. You can wear clothes that are not too light but not too thick either but then if you're coming like of course in spring in general no not in spring if you're coming in january like top of the winter please bring your winter jacket so let me say this again so please pack your clothes because in the first two weeks before you find your footing you don't want to be hassled about i don't have what to wear it can be a lot of stress especially if you're going to a place that is not new york a place that people have to use their cars if that like they ha you have to have a good car to be moving around it's because in texas there are no like there's not so much um stations like in new york that there are buses there are trains they are but the distance <laughs> before you wait for the train here <laughs> you will wait and tire so you need like cars to move around and if you know you are not like accessible to one it's my it might be a hassle so what i'm saying is pack for the weather so if you're coming in uh, in fall i suggest you just pack enough clothes. but if you're coming if you think you still want to buy a winter jacket sure because the truth is there are winter jackets here there are clothes here it's just that the time and how you would move around to get them might be the problem so just pack what you need honestly at least for two solid weeks you need to pack what will sustain you so of course and if you have your favorite clothes bring it on baby girl and for hair too you might decide to do your wigs because making hair here <laughs> making hair <laughs> chineke making hair here is very pricey and honestly speaking i also want you to come with remove the mentality of when I come, I'll be converting everything to Naira. I did this for the longest time, but it did not pay me because when you hear the amount of things you're buying in Naira, you almost cry. So making hair here is very expensive. So for my ladies then, please buy your wigs, make your wigs and bring them when you're coming just so it helps you to not to wear one look for the whole term or something. Do that. So yes, bring wigs, bring your clothes bring but for shoes honestly i'm not a shoe freak so i didn't come with a lot of shoes and i honestly did not care because i'm not a shoe freak but if you think you love shoes shoes are kind of heavy come with light shoes come with shoes that maybe for presentation in class and all that for church but don't come with shoes that will take up the space in your bag 
it's not necessary. You won't half the time, you won't even wear them. You probably will, your taste will change and you will see other shoes that are very cheap and you end up going for them and they are nice. So for shoes, I'm not going to say you should splurge on that. Maybe because it's me, but if you think you're a shoe girly, then all the best to you or shoe boy, all the best to you, but it's not something I would advise. Next thing would be food stuff. Okay, so first things first, let's cancel this out. Nothing liquid should be in your luggage. No palm oil, no um, what is liquid again, no granite oil. Like granite oil is like there's a sea, a whole, a whole ocean of granite oil here. So don't worry about it. So palm oil, a no no, because think about it. What if this palm oil is spill and spill all over your clothes? Hey. So even for people that say they freeze the palm oil, I don't know how you do it, but it's a no for me. Nothing that has to do with liquid should be in your luggage. So I would suggest you bring crayfish, dry fish, um, gary, uh, beans, all these things you can actually get here. But as I said before, for at least solid two weeks, three weeks, you will need to figure yourself out and you don't want in that moment not to have something to eat, especially if you are not a very good um explorer of food like me i don't really fancy american food so to say i'm not a fan so if you know you're an african food person you need to actually bring these things but bring them in don't bring them in ridiculous quantity just pack them in all these ziplocs i'll probably show you pictures of what i did with my load but pack them in all these ziplocs don't don't overdo it just pack for the meantime because there are african stores here that you can get food food stuff don't bother about korean thyme <laughs> there's korean thyme in walmart so walmart is like one of the biggest um grocery um store here in america it's a franchise and it has almost all these things but if you want like african food like gary them like um beans and all that probably go to an african store and you will get them they are, i'm not saying they are cheap but they are almost always affordable so to say so you can bring your gary can bring your beans you can bring your crayfish you can bring your dry fish um dry for more i hear that they they remove some people's load and sometimes they don't remove it but honestly it depends on where you're coming in through so but anything dry a ball that's yam flour um cassava flour you can bring all those it's allowed it's not a problem it's okay but make sure you bring them in reasonable quantity and for bread beverages i would suggest you bring your meal and your milk and your regular complexes there are too many variety of complex here in america so you might not necessarily need any of those but please bring your your milk and your meal because some people are lactose intolerant and the kind of milk they have here is this liquid milk and honestly it's distasteful i said what i said no eco kobasi kobasi like it's really not i don't like it you might like it when you come here but a lot of people that have been taking the milk over time end up developing this lactose intolerance thing and i'm not saying if you stay here that long because it will finish right but you can get them in african stores so get them in african stores. you can come with your dry pepper but when you finish you can also get a banero even in walmart and kroger like there are places you can always sort out for this thing so i'm saying when you're packing remember instead of paying extra luggage keep that money to come here and just buy those things that's the thing come with your credit card or your or your debit card especially if you have like a dollar account or something that can help you definitely i would recommend you come with that if you have a virtual card too that can help you sort out your bills in good time helping with the exchange rates that would be fantastic but if you don't have that you can always come here when you come here you open your account and you just live your life basically so that's for food so and if you see one more explanation on this food maybe you want a good list or something maybe i'll put it in the description box or maybe you can reach out to me my my um, instagram handle is always in all my videos the description box just pick up my instagram handles and please follow me on instagram i'm at ayola agbono on instagram where i drop all that kind of content and yeah let's move on next thing to pack would definitely be your maggi a lot of people say they reject them at the checkpoint or something but if they don't reject your home, well, good for you. But if not, don't be discouraged. There's Maggi everywhere. No, it's not a Nigerian brand. It's actually, 
an international brand, although I just found out, found it out like recently. When I didn't know, I thought it was a Nigerian brand, that's the seasoning cubes, but there are seasoning cubes here. It's not something to be worried about. Then for san sanitary, um, sanitary materials like your soap, your cream, if you have a sensitive skin and you know that it will be hard to get the brand that you use here, definitely bring your soap, your cream and everything. But if you're like me, that your skin doesn't really care like that, you can always get all these things here. But for the first two weeks, I would advise you pack your sanitary materials. Um, like ladies, there are different brands of pads here. Like they are, they are a thousand and one brand and they are very, very affordable. But if you know that you would need it for the first two weeks, honestly, pack for the first two weeks. That's what I will always have. Pack for the first two weeks and make sure you can bring what you will use for like first two weeks. And after that, don't bother about it. You can always get it here. Because no matter the amount of food, clothes, jewelry, whatever it is you pack, trust me, it will finish. So when it finishes, you will still have to buy more. So why pay extra at the airport when you can just do what you are supposed to do, then come here and get more. So I will also advise that you pack your things separately. You put your clothes in one of the boxes. And right now, I would even say, if you've bought your box already, put your clothes in the box. And the other bag that is the clothes like bag or the Ghana household, put your food stuff in that one because it is not heavy. So it will help you carry more food stuff than the box. So separate your clothes in one place and that. And also for medicals, when I was going, they only asked me for my my COVID and my COVID test uh, results and my yellow yellow card. So yellow card is like for yellow fever or something. I honestly don't know, but I'm sure if you are coming, you would see like requirements of what of kind of documents you should add to your list of documents already. But so 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 uh, because at the airport, if you also had a layover, they are going to give you like a a place where they'll put your toothpaste and all those things. So in case you want to brush your teeth or something. So honestly, instead of paying extra luggage, you can avoid extra luggage and you still be able to bring out a, bring a reasonable amount of things. Lastly, what I would say you should bring is snacks. Snacks because you might not be able to start cooking immediately. You get here. They might be, um, you can't go out or whatever. A lot of, see, we don't want anything bad to happen, but some things can happen that can halt the process of things for you. So please do bring snacks, snacks like biscuits, um, chin chin, I don't know, like whatever snacks appeal to you. Bring snacks in because you might just, they might just be saving your life for a couple of days before you finally find your footing. Anyways, that will be all for the things I think you should bring. If I remember any other thing while editing this video, I will definitely add them in the description box. So this is a sign you need to check the description box for like a updated list of things to bring. Please don't bring rice. Don't. There's, there's like a long range of rice here that you can get. So I don't think it's necessary. Anyways, that will be all for this video. I wish you a safe flight coming into the US. Hope to see you. And if you're coming to Dallas, if you're coming to UNT, that's my school, University of North Texas, please drop a comment in the comment section. We just might be linking up. Anyways, God bless you. I wish you a safe flight. And thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See, my energy came back at the end of this video because I love what I'm doing. So please help me help me share the video i am honestly at the verge of getting so frustrated to quit like just take out a a break or something but yeah i'm still here for now and the only way that i can be encouraged is if things like change if my views go up if i don't start struggling to see that i'm not honestly just help me thank you for watching this video and i'll see you all in my next video bye